Ads, I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Ink Dependence keeps this blog ad free. <laughs> Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. I'm Mike and this is a fountain pen. Now this video is aimed at taking apart a fountain pen and showing you all the pieces therein. You don't need to disassemble your fountain pen this fully. So let's take a look at what we have here. This is a Franklin Kristoff Model 2 and it is a demonstrator pen. That means that it has a translucent or transparent cap and or barrel. This is the cap of a pen. This is the barrel or the body of a pen. So they were called demonstrators because back in the day you would take them around to shops and you would be able to show the shop owner or customers what's going on inside of pen because sometimes they're more complicated than this, like this ballpoint. And you want to be able to see all the parts and pieces. You can see we have differently colored innards. So we can see screw, uh, like where the screws are and where the individual pieces are and where the springs are and all that jazz. Pretty neat. Nowadays though, these are a stylistic choice and it's just a look that I enjoy in a pen. Okay, so here we have two parts essentially, the cap and the body or the barrel of a pen. Let's remove the cap by unscrewing it. Just take it a couple of turns and there you go. In general, you want to try to unscrew the cap before you try to yank the cap off of a fountain pen. That's a hot tip for you. Now, the cap can come in several different forms. Lots of pens have different kinds of caps, but they all have the same sorts of pieces. You have the place where the pen sits and then you have a finial. Here you can see up here with these screw threads, it comes off, but it's otherwise merely decorative. In this particular cap, you can see that there is a nut and a bolt and there's a spring attached and there's like this little inner cap and it's more complicated and it's holding on a clip. I chose a more a simpler version of a cap just so that we get all the parts, but uh, finials hold many purposes, sometimes decorative, sometimes uh, functional and um, engineered. All right. Now, setting that aside, you have the rest of the pen. We have here again, the body or the barrel of the pen, which is most of the pen itself. And then you have here, the section or the grip section, or sometimes the grip, although section is the more common word for it. And that's simply the part where you hold the pen when you write with it, the grip section. Now, let's take this apart again. We will unscrew the body of the pen and set that aside. What we have here, is the converter. Now, I'll have another video on filling pens and those sorts of things, but this is essentially what you use to uh, suck ink out of a uh, bottle of ink and into a pen. Very simple, we'll take this off. It just comes off, you just give it a little bit of a tug and it'll come off. To insert it, you just sort of press it gently in there. Okay, set that aside. Now, we have here the grip section of the pen and uh, here we have the section. This, uh, These are the threads of the section and then here we have the nib and the feed. Now let's take this apart again. Another again, this is a part that you don't need to do, but I want to show you how it works. This has what is called a nib unit, which means we have the nib and the feed inside another piece that is then screwed into the section. So in order to remove this, it's fairly simple and pretty safe. You just uh, settle this in the crook of your finger like this, and then put your thumb flat against the feed and you'll want to pinch, just, just pinch it flat. And then you'll want to turn this sort of gently but firmly until it goes. And you just unscrew this. Now the reason I say to turn the section and don't twist here is because if you twist here, you may take these out of alignment, you may break something. It's always better to hold this still and turn this. Okay, so there's your grip section. We'll set this over here with the rest of the pieces. Now here we have what's called a collar, a nib, and a feed. So. You can further disassemble this, and I'm gonna give this a tug and we'll see if we can take this apart. Sometimes it's easier than others. Uh, I think I can probably get this one. There we go. Same, uh, same thing as, uh, as before. Stick that on your finger, put this here, pull gently on here. Now, sometimes this will be difficult to take apart and I don't necessarily recommend doing it. You don't really ever need to do this. So here we have the collar, which just holds everything together and screws it into the pen. Here we have the feed. Sometimes this bit up here is called the nipple. That's what I tend to think of it as because that's what you will, um, that's what you will use to attach it to this or to put it into a cartridge. And here we see the feed has a whole bunch of fins and these really aren't doing anything out here. They're, they're mostly for looks as far as I can tell. What's doing the work is this little channel that runs up the middle, which you can see there on the video, especially up here. 
And then you have these little holes, and I'm not 100% sure what these little pockets are for. Some nibs have them, some don't. I've heard tell that they might even just be a bit of machinery. Uh, so this is like where it's attached to the machine when they're making this thing, and they use that to pop it out So to, you know, in manufacturing. Maybe it doesn't serve any purpose. Nobody knows. All right, so that's your feed. This is your nib. The nib is sort of semi-circular so that it sits flush against the feed. It has a couple of parts on its own. One is that it has this little breather hole right there. And the other is this slit that goes down the middle. Ideally, it will be lined up center with the breather hole. If it's not, it's still probably okay, but it's a little bit shoddy. So you want that lined up. And you have up here, the silver bit that you can see is the tipping. Now this nib has been altered and so I don't have a big blob of tipping at the bottom or anything, but you should be able to see that there is a difference in thickness there. That tipping is some other metal that is even harder than the steel or the gold that the nib is made of. It's colloquially called iridium, although I hear that it doesn't actually have iridium in it. So just sort of a holdover from the olden days when it was made of iridium. In any case, that's the part that touches the paper and it's kind of the important part. Okay, so there, is, there are the essential pieces of a fountain pen. Feed, nib, and collar, grip section, converter, barrel, and cap. Stay here. <laughs> it wants to roll away. There we go. And there you have it. The pieces of a fountain pen. Now there are a couple of others. We're gonna get a couple little bonus bits right here. Uh, now let's take a look at this one. This is a Twisby Eco, and you can see that it looks a bit different than the one I just showed you. It has all the same essential pieces, nib, feed, no collar or anything here. This is all just one piece. And then this has a big old piston in it. That's because this is a piston filler, it is aptly named. And when you twist this knob on the back, it moves this piston. And that's how you will fill this with ink or clean it out. Just use this piston to suck ink into the pen. Neat, right? So, piston, piston rod, knob. Simple. One more bonus. This is a Twisby VAC 700, and it is called a VAC because it is a vacuum filler. Again, many of the same parts, the cap is the same, the nib and the feed are the same. This has a section just like the rest. It has a nib unit in here that you can take apart and you don't need to. But it also has this interesting rod that goes down the middle with a little pistony knob down here. So this is a knob, otherwise known as a blind cap sometimes. In order to use this pen, you just have to twist this until you unscrew it. And then you just give it a pull and it will pull this little piston and it's uh and it's little o-ring which is coming a little bit loose in mine here up to the top and then to fill it you will push this down until it gets to this wider part in which case it will suck up a whole bunch of ink so uh vacuum vacuum filler is how this is what this is called Boomp. there you go Okay, I hope this has been, has been informative. If you have other questions, please, please leave them in the comments below, and I will try to answer them as well as I can. Uh, be on the lookout for other videos in this How to Pen series. We'll talk about filling pens and other things here very soon. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. Peace out.